everything you know about the pre-Socratics is a lie. You may have thought that the pre-Socratics came before Socrates. That's a lie. You may have thought the pre-Socratics were human beings. That too is a lie. And if you're like most people, that's probably all you know about the pre-Socratics. But that's fine, okay? Just listen, I'm gonna explain it to you, okay? So the pre-Socratics, as the name implies, are those philosophers that lived prior to Socrates. But a more helpful definition is that they were philosophers that were not influenced by Socratic doctrine. This allows for some of Socrates' contemporaries, most notably the Sophists, to get lumped into the definition even if they lived around the same time or slightly after Socrates himself. So despite the name, not all pre-Socratics were pre-Socrates. As for the pre-Socratics being human beings, recent scholarship has all but proven that the pre-Socratic philosophers were actually Pokemon. I know, crazy, right? But we'll get to that soon. Now, the pre-Socratics we will be talking about are those from the Ionian school, located here around Miletus. An important fact to know about these pre-Socratics is that very few of their works have survived in their original context. The best we have are snippets of their writings, known as fragments, or later authors, most notably Aristotle, quoting them in their own writings. The focus of most pre-Socratic contemplation was on cosmology, which is a fancy way of saying, what are things? Why are they the way they are? How did stuff get here? And what is that stuff made of? They were often looking for a first principle, or arche, the thing from which all other things come about. These folks were concerned primarily with nature, and conspicuously less concerned with things like ethics and politics. So let's jump in. First off, from the Ionian school, we have Thales. His first principle was water. And believe it or not, he was actually a tentacle. Now, don't get down on him because it takes 15 minutes to surf from Cinnabar Island, because every five seconds a wild tentacle appears. Thales would have been a welcome sight in the late 500s BC. He was the first individual to attempt to explain the world without using mythological or supernatural illusions. He believed that water was the source of all life, and that the earth actually floats on top of water. Now please note that Tentacool is a water Pokemon and starts with the letter T. Thales, T, Tentacool, T, Thales, water, Tentacool, water. I'm trying to teach you something here. Up next is Anaximander. Anaximander, a student of Thales, was a ditto. And yes, I know, ditto starts with a D, not an A, but follow me for just one second before you start complaining. Anaximander's first principle was not a particular element like the others. He believed that the first principle was an indefinite substance he called Aperion. Funny thing about the Aperion, it could transform into any other matter that exists. We give him credit because this is a big jump in philosophy, but sadly, one that did not catch on anytime soon because Anaximenes came shortly after that and figured the first principle was air. Anaximenes was an aerodactyl, by the way. Now we come to the, one of the most interesting of the pre-Socratics, Heraclitus. I had to dip into Generation 2 for this one, boys. Oh ho, or ho oh, I don't know, whatever. And you guessed it, Heraclitus' first principle is Fire. Heraclitus suggested that all things are in constant flux or change. From fire all things came, and to fire they return in a sort of never-ending cycle, picked up again in a few centuries by the Stoics in their world conflagration. More on that later. Back in the day, you pretty much had two choices about the idea of change. Either everything was in constant change, as we hear from Heraclitus, or nothing ever changes. Change. as espoused by Parmenides. Heraclitean flux is popularized by his famous saying, you can't step into the same river twice, which isn't saying so much about rivers as it is about change. Everything is constantly changing. There are plenty of other interesting pre-Socratics, like the Sophists, who we'll see later when we talk about Socrates, and the Atomists, who got quite a bit right about cosmology. But they weren't Pokemon, they were like, I don't know, Digimon or Yu-Gi-Oh cards or something. So here's a little recap of what we learned today.
Stay tuned for the next episode of Plus One Intellect, where we will be discussing Socrates and how people trolled before the internet.